Welcome back to MCOC Al Bundy Rose. I got volume eight of my unpopular opinion series. This one should be possibly controversial. I'm saying there is no best champ in MCOC. So people are constantly arguing, discussing, asking, trying to prove, etc. It's going on and on about who's the best. Saw a survey there. And now you're going to see some comments come up. I just randomly grabbed over just a few minutes of in different areas between forums global different things constantly who's the best why they're the best let me prove to you why they're the best a variety of people there's a few names that are constantly coming up and some of this is going to show you why i strongly believe my personal opinion there is no best in this game this video is broken into four parts each providing a piece to the overall puzzle We're going to put all those pieces together to form the puzzle as to why i personally believe there is not a best champ in this game starting off with part one i'm going to focus on nodes nodes massively impact Impact who is bad, good, greater OP and content it varies. The major reason why there is no best, why it can vary, why a champ can be OP in some content and almost useless in other content. There's some champs we say, oh, they're, they're not good for that content. So how can they be the best if they can't be used in some content? Looking at some ideas, these are some of the most influencing nodes in my opinion. Just a few ones I randomly grabbed. Backlash, critical damage is doubled. If more than five critical hits can be incinerate debuffs, those who do criticals like Ghost and Corvus, Biohazard. So if they're not bleed immune or poison immune that can hurt them buff it those buff heavy champs your hyperions things like that keep triggering those buffs well guess what it gets immediately nullified and then regenerates the defender so these play a major influence champs that have those are going to hurt in some of these content caltrops again bleed if they're not bleed immune here's one freezer burn if they are not immune over here and then there's heal block if they're a champ that really focuses or relies heavily on that healer regeneration some of those high reg Again, champs, well, guess what? That's going to hurt him drastically. Machoism, those who keep doing the debuffs like your Nick Furies and stuff, going to keep regenerating, mesmerize, evade. So if they don't have the evade or true strike ability, it's going to make it harder for them. The no retreat, dash back, quake with no retreat. A lot of dead end could be co possibly going on right there. The prove yourself, indestructible as long as combo. Another one, if there's a prove yourself, going to have to get quake's uh, hit count up first. The physic thorns, physical contact uh, percentage, non-contact back, safe guard. So you high damage champs, your CGRs, your Hyperions, your Corvus is on safeguard. It's going to be very hard though. Your ghosts, your slash tires dashing backwards. Again, something good luck. Keep dashing back and evading or phasing out. Spiked armor, critical hit. So someone like your ghost or your Corvus is going to be hurt on spiked armor and stun immunity. Those who do the parry heavy style fight going to be drastically hurt. So I got a bunch of random ones and then some of the more common ones that we're seeing lately. True strike and true true focus specifically design they're pulling a blade again we remember years ago blade was the most op in the game by many people believe who got indirectly nerfed through nodes and champs guess what true focus is doing the same thing to quake and to ghost why now because more people have realized how good they are it took a while for them to catch on in fact in 2008 Teen, we'll see very few people thought that Quake was the best. 6% in this survey from 2018 thought Quake was the best in the game, and she's been around much longer. Everybody thought Blade was. This is a reminder, Kabam can immediately nerf any OP champ they want, any time they want, without it being considered a nerf. Just by changing up the nodes or some defender abilities. So we've been seeing that with Ghost, we've been seeing that with Quake. Don't be surprised, a little bit down the road, those who people automatically hail as the best, Bunny, because they've been around for a long time, they weren't automatically hailed as the best until a few people got OP with them, did some uncharacteristic stuff, and then people just kind of robotically just quote them as being the best even people who don't have them or can't use them correctly will robotically do that. These can be nerfed at any point in time. Let's go to part two. Masteries impact how good the champion is and impact how you play the champ. Some champs you have to completely change. Sometimes they're horrible with suicides like a um Professor X, for example. Ooh, that's a rough one. You have to change how you play like a Doom. Suicide is an example of mastery. 60% increased damage, we get recoil damage. So you have to avoid those S1s and S2s on most champs. Some exceptions, unless you use synergies I'm going to talk about soon, too, and a champ like Ghost. Uh, bleed. 
poison damage. So these plane impacts, so if you're running masteries, that changes who's going to be the best for you and vice versa. Some champs are nearly as good without the suicide mastery, such as a Corvus and Omega Reg, several others fit into their uh, a Diablo. Then you have your masteries. More so, deep wounds can change. Um, those bleed champions all of a sudden become a lot more better with this. Mystic dispersion, your mystics such as your Doom, who people love to talk about Dr. Doom. Mystic dispersion can play a huge role. These masteries play a role in how good these champs are. These masteries can play a role in how you use these champs, the rotations you use. Let's go into part three. Synergies greatly impact a champ and or team. So there's some out there. There's some that impact just the team, some as the champ. A ghost with hood to get out of recoil possibly is a great one. A chorus and true strike with Proxima. But then there's some like Odin. I'm going to focus on who could change one player or the entire team. He's got a pre-fight. That's some great pre-fights. He's got some great synergies right on over here. So they can completely change how good somebody is. In fact, we'll see he get, makes a lot of champs much, much better, either with the synergies and or the pre-fights increased damage. Uh, over here on Hella Hella be, goes from pretty good to the best damage dealer in the game with this synergy. Massive difference can be come straight OP. So the synergies play a huge role. Those pre-fights can play a role. Then we got Apocalypse over here. So he himself does a bunch of mutants. You stack him up, he can get some massive attack attack rating increase right there and become pretty dang OP. Cable goes from uh, to dang dude with this simple synergy right here. Doesn't even need the pre-fight of APOC. I mean, Cable becomes straight beast mode, arguably one of the better champs in a lot of content. Of course, it's going to depend on content. Storm goes from uh, to awesome. Pyramid X goes straight up awesome with this as well so a champ a synergy a pre-fight can ma and this is even without horsemen this synergy makes i like extremely good add the horsemen and damn she's awesome got lots of videos of her gambit and is almost broken with horsemen of apocalypse can get 100 percent perfect block and all those specials and attacks and the wolverine so with those pre-fights archangel with the synergies so the and the pre-fight a lot of things happen right on over here uh, strife and hit with that pre with the synergy pre fights as well. Then we have Mr. Fantastic, another one who does a lot, not just for the team, but not just for those with the synergy, but the entire team. And I'm going to show you, he can make certain classes, the entire class. I mean, super awesome. I've done a couple of videos on some of this. We're seeing some of the different synergies he has right here. But the point is, it could be one champ. It could be the entire team that a synergy can completely change. You can change everything with the search and synergy um there's a synergy i'm showing coming up right on over here you bring mr fantastic in like a she hulk or something it gives all of your champs in those searching classes massive attack boosts from power sting so we see cosmic and skill could be extremely good tech and science is one of my favorites this is one of my favorite synergies of the entire game you take mr fantastic you take one of those four listed there and everybody in the tech and science class you have gets those power strings up to three times you get our three versions of ghost or even um some of these other champs you're doing 50k power strings each time with this synergy changes everything but that could be also a luke cage it could be a lot of stuff any tech or slides is going to get those massive ones then we saw the one below that too part four content you're on has a massive impact some champs they all most good champs have their mace massive niche story mode here's an example here's some act 7.2 we see a pretty decent health pool four and a hundred thousand we see some variety of nodes here from attack increasing increased ratings for six or no retreat treat dashes back got a degen timer and again get 200 percent attack degen passive no Surrender, resist 90% of degeneration damage, resistant potency, uh, block damage. We see heavy assault, get increased damage with the heavy attacks right there. Uh, defender becomes unstoppable on some cases. When defenders knock down heavier special, they become debuff immune. These all change. And then, of course, true strike. Defender attacks, ignore resistance, evasion, and auto block. That changes everything. These health pros changes. Here's an event quest example. 
And keep in mind, story mode earlier on, smaller health bars, simpler nodes later on. So it changes who is best. Here in event quest, it's on cavalier mode at least, certain classes get advantage per one. Scientific is a huge one. Those weakness, exhaust, fatigue buff. So those who fit into this category or in the debuffs are massively important here. Someone who can't do debuffs may be quake in these nodes. I don't know how good she's going to be here. You have to have debuffs in order to really get things going. So again, the content you're on so, and to include the nodes, the health pools, how long the fights, how many fights are in the quest on the path of their six fights to you can't build somebody up for those ramp up champs like an Aegon or is there 10, 15 fights along the way, almost 20 fights and things like Abyss. And then we see some special event quest an example of a recent one right over here to include the special two attack damage this one you can't get up to s3 before you get up to three bars of power then it goes reset what can make somebody like doom can't do his good rotations right there can't do the s3s uh this also a big one close encounters you gotta have a close play style can't special heal attack um unblockable specials the invade right here so champs that can crit their block can become better here champs who don't hit much into the block they're not going to be as strong here and of course ignore evade and miss true focus has been a big one commonly used i'm getting flashbacks i'm getting deja vu when they silently nerf blade same things happening with ghost and quake these days so those of you who argue that she's the greatest well if you can only use her in, in a lot of things anymore then there's things like aw could be aq2 keep in mind these are usually short ones especially aw harder for ramp up champs usually smaller health pools so you can't get up those champs who got to build up the cycle. It can be dependent on AW. You need to have a certain path for it to use somebody like Corvus, for example. You got to have to look at the nodes on certain style. So these content is it short. How many fights? The past. This all plays a massive role in who good, how good along the way. Our conclusion, based on these points in this video, it shows who is best in some content is terrible in others and vice versa. So there can't be an absolute best because of that alone. No one is best in everything all the time. They're good in some bad and some great and some terrible and some and middle and some even the best champs additionally please remember can be silently nerfed blade is a perfect example along the way once they start getting used more along the way remember the doctor strange he was the most commonly used champ in the entire game through a survey of kabam kabam saw how much he was being used they nerfed him to the ground in 12.0 now they don't directly nerf they silently nerf like we've seen with blade and like we're seeing with quake and ghost these days so who's best now doesn't always mean a whole lot if he's not being the best or she's being the best in later upcoming content don't forget to click that top left icon subscribe to mcoc owl bundy rules turn those notifications on like the video share the video check out some of my playlists my champ tutorials my walkthroughs i got a little something for everyone and thank you so much for watching